Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we're going to do another video, in their own words, talking about liberty. Liberty, of course, for those of you who don't speak Navy ease, is uh, free time on land that uh, sailors are given. And we're talking about this in part because we just accepted the uh, delivery of our functioning 40-foot Liberty boat. So Iowa-class battleships in the 1980s were designed to be equipped with six ship's boats, two 26-foot motor whaleboats, one or two 33-foot personnel boats, and two or three 40-foot Liberty boats like this one. New Jersey is now the only museum battleship to have its complete set of six ship's boats. Now, before we get into the interviews, Battleship New Jersey had a couple of home ports throughout her career. That's where the ship is normally based out of, which is different from a Liberty port, where the ship stops briefly during another deployment or cruise, uh, usually to refuel, resupply, and specifically to give the crew liberty. A common punishment on the ship is uh, having your liberty restricted. So you may hear about that in some of these videos. Some of our home ports include Norfolk, Virginia in the 1950s, Pearl Harbor at various times, Long Beach, California in the 1960s and 1980s. Uh, common liberty ports in the Far East that Battleship New Jersey would have frequented during her career are places like Hong Kong, Shanghai, Yakuska, Japan, and Alongapu in the Philippines, or sometimes Subic Bay. Some of these ports, it's either not deep enough for a 38-foot drafted battleship, or there might not be pier space. Oftentimes, New Jersey goes in as part of a fleet uh, or task force or whatever the case is, so there might not be enough space for every ship to tie up at a pier. Uh, typically, in the home port, you can always tie up at your pier, but if you go into, say, Hong Kong, you might not be able to get into um, a pier, so you have to moor out in the mouth of the harbor or uh, in some other road and take the Liberty boat to and from port. King's Cross was the name of the area in Sydney, Australia. And uh, had a great room, overlooked Sydney Harbor, and, and, and there I waited for several days. And they said, when, when, uh, when you see the ship, it, when you see the ship where you're going, report on board. So it's kind of hard to miss this ship. So I, we were there, there was a sea festival. There was a, ships from all over the world back in the 80s, you know, places we went, people really treated us kindly. And, and you know, and I, I feel for sailors nowadays because there it was nothing like it is now. We, we, we got treated really well. You know, we went into uh, foreign bars or restaurants and rarely paid for anything. And when the ships hit foreign ports, unlike the Jersey, when the Admiral was aboard in the Sixth Fleet, uh, Admiral Parker, we were, were the showpiece of the United States Armed Services, the Navy, showing our strength and what we could do and how sharp we were in one thing or another. And we had to present ourselves, as a matter of fact, to get a pass to go on, quote, liberty in foreign ports, you had to go before a sergeant of the guard, and he started down at your feet and worked his way up. And if there was a hair sticking out the wrong way, if you could get it cut, fine and done. If you, had, if you could get your uniform pressed properly the right way in time, otherwise you didn't get liberty. You were not allowed to go. You had to pass an inspection. I took a swing of the ensign down in Florida we made a big comment about our ship, a black ship, you know, coming in. And I could have gotten in trouble over there, but luckily the guys, his guys, it was an ensign. And they pulled him back and my guys pulled, grabbed me and so that blew over. But uh, we pull into Charleston and we'd get liberty to go on a base to the swimming pool on the base, and they wouldn't let us go in the swimming pool. So our skipper met with the commander of the base at Charleston there, and he says, look, you gotta let these guys go. And he says, 
they're gonna go out, it'd be a riot, huh? You see, it'd be a couple hundred, 150 minutes old, it, it caused a lot of trouble. Yes, I did. We were off the, we got liberty uh, for two days. We were off the ship for two days. And uh, we were treated like royalty, taken through Scotland. Everybody saw we were the only American sailors around. They treated us royally. It was a wonderful experience. Pulling into Australia, we heard lots of stories about what it would be like when we got there. And uh, senior folks above us said, you know, when you get there, there's going to be bags and bags of letters because the Australians love American sailors. They want to take you out to dinner. They want to meet you, take you to their house, their church, whatever, show you, show you the city. Um, so make sure to grab some letters. And when we pulled into the port in Sydney, Australia, and the Sydney Bridge and the Sydney Opera House, and we're in that harbor on this ship, and I first came up topside and looked out, there was thousands and thousands of small watercraft. Just that harbor was full of them. And it was party goers and sightseers and girls doing this and <laughs> unbelievable scene pulling into that harbor. And just the beautiful Sydney skyline. It was an amazing place to visit. We went from Norfolk to La Havre, France, and and uh, tied up right beside the Queen Mary, which was quite an, another. And she she did, she had come across and brought some tourists across the Atlantic, and she she was tied up there at a pier, and when we were tied up, well, well we was actually you no, know, we were tied up behind her. Anyway. Uh, we went into La Havre, France, and I was able enough to get liberty and to to go to Paris. And on Saturday afternoon, we boarded a, a train in La Havre and took us to Paris. And uh, they let us out in Paris, and then we had liberty there until the following Monday. We checked in a hotel there in Paris, and and. Uh, I made the Grand Tour person. <laughs> Off Long Beach, and Captain Tucker came across, made some announcement, you know, the, the, the pep, the, you know, to cheer everybody up, the pep and everything, and he ended it saying, Wetsu. And everybody was like, what the heck is Wetsu? W-E-T-S-U, and we're trying to figure this out. And he says, first person that can figure that out gets a week liberty. I, every, the whole ship was trying to figure it out. And uh, fi uh, finally, somebody figured it out, and it was like, no. And then he said, yep, that's it. And even, uh, and I believe he stuck it in the newsletter even. There was an announcement. Um, so uh, if you were lucky enough to serve under Captain Tucker, you can call yourself a Wetsu warrior. Um, my friend um, oftentimes would force me to go running through the city because he had a big jogger at the time, um, although I wasn't. Um, somehow I got roped in for that. But... Uh, the Australia's most memorable time was when Captain Katz had a party in Hobart, Tasmania. And uh, on board came uh, the governor, of Ho I'm probably saying the wrong title, uh, councilman or governor of uh, Tasmania. He and his daughter came on. And uh, the next day I was at their house for dinner. And the following day he called my mother. And, uh, uh, just told her that I was okay and had a good time and I was in, uh, he was happy to meet me and just a bunch of nice stuff. And it was just uh, pure kindness from the guy. It was just pure kindness, you know. Um, they were happy to treat the American sailors like gold. The first place we went to was Norway, Oslo, Norway. And I had an in, uh, uh, interesting experiment there. I had run into a, a young lady and her father had a jewelry store. And I was from the jewelry store, a uh, watch repairman. My father was, and I was in the process of being one. And I got an extra two days or so to go visit with her father and mother in the jewelry shop. I always found the slogan, join the Navy, see the world. Uh, kind of weird because, yeah, the world is 70% water, but you've seen some water, you've seen it all. Um, Liberty ports of call are those opportunities where sailors get to experience the world. And 
it's true. They get to experience places that uh, I've never been to. So how many of you guys have been to some of the Liberty ports that our crew members talked about? Let us know in the comment section down below. Did you only get there because you were in the military or have you gotten to go there on vacation? Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate the support you guys have given the museum. And there's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue supporting us. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.